Hi everyone, this is Dipendu Konai and welcome to Math Cyberspace. So continuing from the previous lecture, today's topic is field structure and order structure. And this is the second video of the lecture series of real analysis. So before starting today's lecture, let me tell you what we have learned in previous lecture. In previous lecture, we have learned the properties of set. There are some operations of set theory, union, intersection, complement, difference, symmetric difference, etc. We have learned all these topics in previous lecture. And today we will learn about field structure, order structure, supremum, infimum property, and Archimedean property. Okay, so without wasting your time, let's start today's lecture that is field structure. So what is field structure? Suppose you have a set F and you have two operations, addition and multiplication. Now, this set F will be called a field with respect to the two operations, addition and multiplication, if it satisfies some properties. Now, what are those properties? There are total 11 properties, total 11 properties. Five properties with respect to addition, five properties with respect to multiplication, and the next one is distributive law. So you have a set F and two operations, addition and multiplication. Now the set F, if satisfy the five properties with respect to addition, five properties with respect to multiplication and the distributive law, then the set will be called a field. Now, what are those five properties? with respect to addition and multiplication. Let's discuss about those properties. First, axioms for addition. We have F, two operations, addition and multiplication. First one. First property is that for all X, Y belongs to F, X plus Y belongs to F. Okay, and this property is called closer property closer property. Second one, addition will be symmetric. That means x plus y is equals to y plus x for all x, y belongs to f. And this property is called commutative property. Okay, number three. Number three is x plus y plus z this is equals to x plus y plus z and this is called distributive distributive property number four number four is for each x for each x there will exist an element zero in f such that x plus 0 is equals to 0 plus x is equals to x for all x belongs to f and this 0 this 0 is called additive identity identity okay number 5 number 5 is for each x belongs to f there exists an element 1 by x belongs to, sorry, there exists an element minus x belongs to f such that x plus minus x is equals to minus x plus x is equals to 0. So for each element x in f, there exists an element minus x so that the addition will be the identity element that is additive identity element and this minus x is called the additive inverse element additive inverse okay so these are the five properties with respect to the addition let's see for multiplication the first property is for all x y belongs to f the product also belongs to F. And similarly, this property is also called closer property. Okay, second one. Second one is the multiplication is symmetric for all X, Y belongs to F. And this is called commutative. Okay, number three. 
Number three is x y into z. This is equals to x into y z for all x y z belongs to F, and this is called associative. Sorry, I have written here distributive. Sorry, this is associative. Associative. This is called associative. Okay. Number four. Number four is that there exists an element one belongs to F such that x into one is equals to one into x is equals to x. And this one, this one is called multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity. Okay, number five. Number five is for each element x belongs to f, there exists an element one by x belongs to f such that x into one by x is equals to one. That means for each element x in f, there exists an element one by x so that by multiplying those two elements, we will get the multiplicative identity. And this element one by x is called multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse. Okay, now distributive law. Distributive law is that for all x, y, z belongs to f, x into y plus z, this is equals to x, y plus x, z. Okay, so this is the distributive law. So we have gotten total 11 properties, five properties with respect to addition, five properties with respect to multiplication and one distributive law. If any set F satisfy all these 11 properties, then the set will be called a field. Set of real numbers. Set of real numbers always satisfy all these properties. Set of rational numbers always satisfy all these properties. Okay, so if uh, set of real numbers R and set of rational numbers Q, so R and Q are filled. Okay, now set of natural numbers and set of integers. If you see for set of natural numbers, in set of natural numbers, there does not exist additive identity. Okay, in set of natural numbers, there does not exist multiplicative identity. That's why set of, sorry, multiplicative inverse. That does not exist multiplicative inverse. That's why set of natural number is not a field. Similarly, we can prove for set of integer. Now let's go to the next topic that is order structure. So what is order structure? Order means in a set, if we choose any two elements, we can arrange the two elements in a particular order, in descending or in preceding, okay? In descending or in ascending, okay? So this is the order. Now, what is order set? Order set means, suppose you have a set S, okay? Now, if you choose any two elements X and Y from these two sets, then the two elements will satisfy any one, will satisfy one and only one of these relations, either X less than Y, or x greater equals to y or x greater than y. You have a set S and you are choosing two elements x and y and the two elements will satisfy one and only one of these three relations x less than y, x is equals to y and x is greater than y. And this property is called law of trichotomy. Trichotomy. Okay, so this is our law of trichotomy. And the second one is for all x, y, z belongs to S and if x less than y and y less than z, then x will be less than z. Okay, so these two are properties. If any set satisfies these two properties, then this, this will be called an ordered set. Now, what is ordered field? 
ordered field is suppose you have given a set s and the elements will satisfy all these four properties law of trichotomy transitivity compatible with addition compatible with multiplication now what is law of trichotomy i have already told you that you have two elements x and y and these two elements will satisfy one and only one of the three relations that is x less than y x is equals to y and x is greater than y out of these three relations the two elements will satisfy one and only one condition this is called law of trichotomy now transitivity what is transitivity transitivity is that you have three elements x y and z so for all x y z for all x y z and the condition is that x is greater than y y is greater than z then x will be greater than z x will be greater than z and this is called the transitivity x greater than y y greater than z then this implies that x will be greater than z now what is compatible with addition suppose x y belongs to s and z also belongs to s now compatible with addition this says that if x is less than y then x plus z will also less than y plus z okay this is called the compatible with addition now compatible with multiplication suppose x and y belongs to s and z is an element and z is an positive element from s okay then if x is less than y then the product xz will be less than yz okay and this is called the compatible with multiplication if any set satisfy all this property then this will be called an ordered set okay now go to the next topic that is bounded above and bounded below <laughs> so we already have learned what is ordered set okay now suppose you are given a finite set now you know what is ordered element now taking the concept of ordered set you can find out which element is greatest element and which element is the smallest element in the finite set and this is the main concept of boundedness okay bounded above and bounded below so what is bounded above first of all let's talk about bounded above suppose you are given a set s and a non empty set e is a subset of s e is a subset of s then you have there exist an element beta there exist an element beta belongs to s such that for all x belongs to e x will be less than equals to beta i am giving a diagram suppose this is our s the whole line this is our s okay and this portion this portion is our e and e is subset of s okay now suppose here in this position there exists an element beta then for all x for all x belongs to e for all x belongs to e this x will be less than equals to beta and this beta this beta is taken from s this beta is taken from s and the x are taken x are taken from e okay so for all x belongs to e x is less than equals to beta in that case this beta this beta is called upper bound upper bound and the set e the set e is called bounded above okay so i am repeating you have a set s and e is subset of s now an element beta there exists an element beta belongs to s such that for all x belongs to e the element x are from the subset e and the beta that is the upper bound upper bounds are from s 
such that x is less than or equals to beta so from here we can say that x is less than or equals to beta x is from e and beta is from s so when x is equals to beta that means beta in that case beta is from e that means the upper bound beta may be from e may not be from e so the upper bound may exist out of the set e okay now go to the bounded below what is bounded below by similar manner suppose here i am taking the same example here s is the set okay and e is subset of s okay now there exists an al element alpha belongs to s such that such that for all x belongs to e x will be greater than equals to alpha suppose there exist here there exist an element alpha and here x exist in e and all x here all x will be greater than equals to alpha okay and this alpha this alpha is called lower bound lower bound and in that case the set e the set e will be called bounded below okay so i am repeating you have a set s and e is a subset of s now there exist an element alpha in s such that for all x belongs to e x will be greater than equals to alpha then this alpha will be called a lower bound and the set e will be called the bounded below and the same process the alpha that is the lower bound may exist in the set e may not exist in the set e may not exist in the set e okay so now from here let's talk about here beta beta is our upper bound suppose there exist an point this is beta plus 1 okay and this is beta plus 2 okay and so on and so on okay now here the condition is that by the property of bounded above x is less than equals to beta okay so using this definition we can say that x is less than beta plus 1 similarly we can say x is less than beta plus 2 and so on that means beta plus 1 this is also an upper bound beta plus 2 this is also an upper bound upper bound of which set upper bound of set e okay that means there are infinitely number of infinite number of upper bounds in the set e similarly here we can say that the x x is x will be greater than alpha similarly there exists an element here alpha minus 1 this suppose there is alpha minus 2 so x is greater than alpha similarly we can say x is greater than alpha minus 1 similarly we can say x is greater than alpha minus 2 and so on that means there are infinite number of lower bound okay now we have to find out these sets beta beta plus 1 beta plus 2 and so on from these sets which element is the lowest element or you may call which element is the least element here beta is the least element okay here may not be beta plus 1 may here may be beta plus 0.0009 etc okay so beta is the least element from this set okay that's why beta is called the least upper bound least upper bound here the collection is the collection is the points of upper bounds and from this collection beta is the least element that's why beta is called the least upper bound and similarly here these collections alpha alpha minus 1 alpha minus 2 these collections are collection of lower bound and out of these collections alpha this element is the greatest element alpha minus 1 this is smaller than alpha similarly alpha minus 2 this is smaller than alpha and that means alpha is the greatest element that's why alpha will be called the greatest lower bound greatest lower 
bound. Okay, or it is called infima. Okay, or it is called GLB, greatest lower bound. Similarly, this is least upper bound, or it is called LUP, or it is called suprema. Okay, so this is the main concept of suprema and infima. So here beta, beta is the least upper bound, or suprema or LUB, and alpha is the greatest lower bound or infima or GLB. So what is the definition of greatest upper least upper bound? So LUB. LUB. So beta will be called beta will be called the least upper bound. And there is two conditions. The conditions is that beta must be an upper bound. Okay. And second one is suppose there exists arbitrary number of upper bounds. Suppose I am taking T. T is upper bound. And the condition is that the beta, beta must be less than equals to T. T is arbitrary upper bound. And this beta must be less than T. Then we will call that beta is least upper bound. Upper bound. Okay. Now similarly for GLB, that is greatest lower bound. The condition is that alpha alpha must be must be a lower bound okay and condition 2 is that there exists another lower bounds suppose i am taking m okay m is another lower bound and the condition is that m must be less than equals to alpha and in that case alpha will be called a greatest lower bound lower bound and this is called suprema and this is called infima and we can write it as the set was s so we can write suprema of s this is equals to beta and we can write it as infima of s this is equals to alpha okay so these are the concepts of least upper bound and greatest lower bound. Now, suppose I am giving you an example. Suppose here, <coughs> suppose S1. S1 is equals to one by N, such that N belongs to set of natural number. Okay, so what is the now collection of the numbers so s1 is equals to if we put the numbers suppose this is our real axis okay and this point is zero so one by n and n belongs to natural number so n is equals to one here one for n is equals to two this will be half so this is 0 0.5 half and here this will be suppose one by three here suppose this is one by four and so and so on. That means the points are approaching to zero. Okay, so here the upper, upper bound is one and the lower bound is zero. Okay, so in this set, the supremum, supremum of S1, this will be one and infimum, infimum of S1, this will be zero. Now note that here the collection, the set is one by N, N belongs to natural number. The point one, the point one belongs to S1, but the point zero does not belongs to S1. And that's why I have told you that the suprema and the infima may exist in the set, may not exist in the set. And zero does not exist in the set S1 and one exists in the set S1, okay? Similarly, a set of natural number, set of natural number here, the infima, infimum of n this will be one and supremum of n does not exist does not exist okay and from here let me tell you one thing suppose you are given a set s 
okay and s is bounded above and similarly s is bounded below in that case the set s will be called a bounded set bounded set so when a set is both bounded above and bounded below in that case the set s will be called a bounded set okay now if you see that the set is only bounded above or only bounded below not both in that case the set will be called unbounded okay in that case the set will be called unbounded or maybe the set is neither bounded above nor bounded below suppose here set of natural number set of natural number is bounded below but not bounded above and so set of natural number is unbounded set of real numbers set of real numbers is not bounded above not bounded below so set of real number is also unbounded set of rational numbers similarly unbounded set of irrational numbers unbounded and so on okay so this is the concept of boundedness and unboundedness now let me tell you here the suprema what will be preferable if i say there exists a suprema there exists the suprema what will be most preferable the suprema what because suprema is unique suprema cannot be more than one suprema is always unique that's why always we will use the suprema okay for example how we can show that suprema is unique suppose you have a set s and i am considering that there exist two suprema u1 and u2 okay then by the uh, law of trichotomy there will be three cases u1 less than u2 u1 equals to u2 and u1 greater than u2 there are three cases okay now first case if u1 is less than u2 that means here u2 u2 is our suprema and when u2 is suprema then u1 cannot be our upper bound okay but i have told you that u1 u2 both are suprema so this case is not exist similarly this case does not exist so only possibility is that u1 is equals to u2 okay so suprema is unique and similarly infima is also unique okay now next go to the next topic that is order completeness property what is order completeness property i have told you about the suprema infima property eh? and uh, bounded unbounded sets also so here order completeness property is saying that every non empty set every non empty set of real numbers which is bounded above has the suprema or least upper bound in r so the statement is saying that if you have a non empty set of real numbers and if you say that the set is bounded above then the set must have a suprema and similarly if you have a non empty set of real numbers and if you say that the set is bounded below then the set must have an infima or greatest lower bound okay this is the main fact of order completeness property and using these two statements here is the most important theorem that is the set of rational numbers is not order complete not order complete that means there does not exist suprema or infima now we have to prove that in set of rational numbers there does not exist any suprema or infima okay let's say here the set of rational numbers and we will prove this using the help of order completeness property so here order completeness property is saying that every non empty set of real numbers which is bounded above has the suprema or least upper bound so here the set is rational number so we are taking a set s s is equals to collection of all those elements x such that x belongs to q x is greater than 0 and x square less than 2 okay so this is the set s s is the collection of all those rational, rational numbers which are positive and x square is less than 
two. So this is this S is subset of Q. Okay. Now by the property of completeness, first of all we have to show that S is non-empty. First of all we have to show that S is non-empty. Then we will show that S is bounded above. And if these two properties hold, then the set S must have an A supremum. Okay. Let's see. Here S is equals to this set. If we choose, if we choose x is equals to one, if we choose x is equals to one, that means one, one is positive, no doubt, one is rational number, and one square, this is less than two, so one belongs to S. That means S is non-empty. Okay, S is non-empty. Now we have to show that S is bounded above. Here, if we choose x is equals to two, then 2 square is less than 2, that is 4 is less than 2. This is not possible. That means x cannot be 2. The elements in this set is, the elements will be between open interval 0 and 2. Okay, that all the elements will be positive and that will be less than 2. Okay, that means 2 is the upper bound. Okay, and then since 2 is the upper bound, that means S is bounded above. Okay, so here S is non-empty and here S is bounded above. Then by the completeness property of real numbers, we can say that S will have a suprema. S will have a suprema. Now let, suppose the suprema of S, suprema of S, this is equals to suppose K. Supremum S is equals to a value K. Now, if supremum S is equals to K, then we have three cases. Case one, case two, and case three. The three cases are either K square will be less than two, or K square equals to two, or K square greater than two. There are three cases, okay? Now, our aim is that we have to find out the suprema. I am considering that K is suprema. Now, if we prove that, if we can prove that the, the um, point K, this is our suprema. Now, to prove K is suprema, what we have to show? We have to show that there exists an arbitrary element Y, which is less than K. The arbitrary element y in S are less than k. And number two is we have to show that y belongs to S. We have to choose arbitrary element y which is in S and we have to show that y is less than k. Then k will be our supremum. This is our aim for this case one. So arbitrarily we choose suppose y is, is equals to y is equals to So y is equals to arbitrarily we are choosing y is equals to 4 plus 3k by mm, 3 plus 2k. Okay. And this k is positive because we are getting, we have taken k as the supremum of s and s is the collection of positive rational numbers. Okay. So k must be positive. Okay. So y is equals to 4 plus 3k by 3 plus 2k. Our aim is that we have to show that k is suprema. So this is our first aim, y is less than k. Now how we can show that y is less than k? If we calculate y minus k, and if we can show that y minus k is less than zero, then we can say that y is less than k. So let's calculate y minus k. y minus k, this is equals to four plus three k by three plus 2k minus k. This is equals to 4 plus 3k minus 3k minus 2k square by 3 plus 2k. This is equals to 3k, 3k cancelled out. So this will be 2 into 2 minus k square by 3 plus 2k. Okay. Now, k square is less than 2. 
and this is 2 minus k square. Since k square is less than 2, so this term will be positive. That means y minus k, this is greater than 0. That is y is greater than k. Here we are getting y is greater than k. Now we have to show that y belongs to S or not. If we can show that y belongs to S, that means there exists an element y in S and we are getting that the y element y is greater than k and k is our supremum and this is not possible. So we have to show that y does not belongs to S. Okay, this is our aim. Y does not belongs to S. Okay, let's see. So how we can show that Y belongs to S. So Y square, Y square less than two. Okay. Y square. Y square is equals to four plus three K by three plus two K whole square. And y square minus 2, this is equals to 4 plus 3k whole square minus 2 into 3 plus 2k whole square by 3 plus 2k whole square. This is equals to 16 plus 24k plus 9k square minus 2 into 9 plus 12k plus 4k square by 3 plus 2k whole square. This is equals to 24k and this is minus 24k cancelled out. And here 16, this is minus 18. So this will be minus 2. Minus 2. And this is 9k square here minus 8k square. That means k square. So k square minus 2 by 3 plus 2k whole square. So k square minus 2 and here given k square is less than 2. That means this is less than 0. Okay. That means y square is less than 2. So from here we can say that y belongs to S y belongs to s so this condition is satisfied y belongs to s but that we can see that there exists and in first case we have gotten y is greater than k so there exists an element y in s which is greater than k and k is our supremum is it possible there exists an element y which is greater, greater than the supremum of the set this is not possible so case one is discarded okay now case two Case 2 is saying that k square is equals to 2. That means k is equals to root 2. And root 2, this is not a rational number. Root 2 is irrational number. Okay. And the collection is from rational numbers. That means this case is also discarded. Now case 3. Case 3 is k square greater than 2. By similar manner as I have done in case 1, we are choosing an element, arbitrary element y, y is equals to 4 plus 3k by 3 plus 2k. And the, our aim is same. First aim is we have to show that y is less than k and second is y belongs to s. If we can show these two conditions, then we can say that k is our supremum. Okay, so this is our y. Now calculate y minus k. y minus k, this will be, as I have calculated before, this will be 2 into 2 minus k square by 3 plus 2k. Okay. And here k square, the case is k square is greater than 2. k square is greater than 2. That means, sorry, this will be, let calculate it. I have forgotten which. So 4 plus 3k by 3 plus 2k. Okay. Minus k. So this will be 4 plus 3k minus 3k minus 2k square by 3 plus 2k. So from here we are getting 2 into 2 minus 
k square by 3 plus 2k and 2 minus k square k square is greater than 2 k square is greater than 2 that means this is less than 0 so y is less than k y is less than k and the next one is we have to show that y belongs to s let's check Let y square. What will be y square? Y square minus 2. Let's calculate y square minus 2. So 4 plus 3k by 3 plus 2k whole square minus 2. Okay. So this will be 60 plus as it is the same calculation. This will be k square minus 2 by 3 plus 2k whole square and k square is greater than 2 that means this is positive okay so we are getting y square is greater than 2 that means y does not belongs to s so here we are getting an element y which is less than k but which is less than k but y does not belongs to s okay that means That means y is also an upper bound. y is less than k and y does not belongs to s. So y is an upper bound which is not in s. But our k is supremum so y cannot be upper bound. So case 3 is also discarded. So here all the possibilities are discarded. Case 1, case 2 and case 3. That means in the set of rational number there does not exist any supremum. Similarly there does not exist any infimum. That's why the set of rational number is not ordered complete. Okay. Now suppose we are choosing the set X such that here the collection is from set of rational number. Okay. Now we are taking from set of real numbers. Okay. Now we will show that R is ordered complete. Now how we can show that R is ordered complete? For case 1, k square less than 2. The calculation will be same. Okay. The k square less than 2, in that case, that by similar manner, this will be discarded and case 2, this will be discarded. But now in case, sorry, this case 3 will be discarded. Now case 2, here case 2, root 2, k is equals to root 2. And root 2, this is our irrational number and root 2 belongs to R. So k is equals to root 2, this will be our supremum. So we are getting our supremum as it is bounded above set. So in this case, R is our order complete, okay? Next, go to the next topic that is Archimedean property. This is very, very important topic, Archimedean property. What is Archimedean property? Here, <clears throat> Archimedean property says that, suppose you have two positive real numbers, A and B. You have two positive real numbers. Positive real numbers. Okay. And if A and B are two positive real numbers, then there exists a positive integer N belongs to Z plus such that N A will be greater than B. That means the product of any one of the positive real numbers with the positive integer that will be greater than the another positive real numbers. Okay. So the statement is that if A and B are two positive real numbers, then there exists a positive integer N such that NA is greater than B. Okay. So Let's see what will be the proof of Archimedean property. Proof. So here 
A and B are positive real numbers, and we have to show that A and A is greater than B. Now we will prove this theorem by contradictory method. Contradictory method. So let's, if possible, if possible, n a less than equals to b. If n a is less than equals to b, that means the set n a such that n belongs to Z plus. The set, this set will be bounded above. This set will be bounded above because here b is the upper bound. So that means the set n a such that n belongs to Z plus, this is bounded above. And also this is non-empty. So a non-empty set which is bounded above by the property of completeness, we can say that this set will have a supremum. Okay, this set will have a supremum. Suppose this set is S and we are taking M is the supremum. So M is equals to supremum of S. Okay, so by the property of suprema, we can say that the element N A must be less than equals to M. N A must be less than equals to M because M is the supremum. So N plus one into A, this will be again less than equals to M. Now, if we simplify it, then we are getting N A is less than equals to M minus one. So here we are getting N A less than equals to M. And here also we are getting N A less than equals to M minus A. And M minus A, this is less than M. So we are getting an another upper bound, which is less than M. But M is our supremum. So this is not possible. This is our contradiction. This is our contradiction. So our assumption that is N A less than equals to B, this is not true. So N A will be always greater than B, okay? So this is the simple Archimedean property, but the application of Archimedean property, this is, there is a huge application in mathematics. Now let's, let me tell you some corollary with the help of Archimedean property. Corollary one, corollary one. Archimedean property says that A and B are positive real numbers, okay? Now suppose, suppose A is positive, okay? And B is any arbitrary number, any arbitrary number. Then in that case, what will be the result of Archimedean property? Again, this will be Na greater than B, okay? Now corollary two. Corley 2 says that suppose B is greater than 0. B is greater than 0. In that case, you can find a natural number N such that N is greater than B. That means here we are taking A is equals to 1 in the result of Archimedean property. So you have an arbitrary positive Num real number B greater than zero. And then there exists a natural number N such that N is greater than equals to B. And here we are taking A is equals to one. But here we are choosing B is equals to zero. Now what will be the case when we will choose B is arbitrary? That is corollary three. If B is arbitrary. In that case, again, we will get a positive integer such that n is greater than b. So there are, these are the three corollaries with the help of Archimedean property. So I am repeating again, what is Archimedean property? Suppose you have two positive real numbers, a and b, then you will get a natural number n such that n a is greater than b. Okay, and there are three corollaries with the help of Archimedean property. Now come to the next topic that is Dedekind property. Let me tell you this topic Dedekind's property, this is not included in the syllabus of CSR net exam. That's why right now I am skipping 
this topic to Dedekind's property. But I will tell you just the statement of Dedekind's property. What is the statement? Suppose this is our whole real numbers. Okay. Now we divide these real numbers into two parts. Okay. Part or two sets, you may call it two sets, set A and set B. And Dedekind property says that the set A will be non-empty and set B, this will be non-empty. Number two is that the union of the two sets, A union B, this is equals to whole R, okay? And number three is that suppose X belongs to A, and y belongs to b then x will be less than y that means every element of a will be less than every element of b so if these three properties are satisfied then a will contain greatest element and B will contain lowest element. Okay, so this is the statement of Dedekind's property that the real number are divided into two classes, into two classes A and B. And the two classes are non-empty. A is not equals to five, B is not equals to five and the union will be whole R. Each element of A is less than each element of B. In that case, Dedekind property says that A will contain the greatest element and B will contain the uh, lowest element, that is the least element, okay? And this is the simple Dedekind's property. So this is all about the second lecture. So in second lecture, what we have learned? We have learned about the field structure and order structure. The supremum, infimum property, bounded, unbounded set, concept of bounded, unbounded set, Archimedean property and Dedekind's property. So I hope this video will be very helpful for you. If you like my video, then please share it with your friends and subscribe our channel and stay with us. Thank you.